This time, my journey led me to Techstars Entrepreneur's Toolkit, a place to learn the basics. And for someone like me, the basics are really important. At this point, I have some very fundamental understanding of how startups work. And Techstars looks like a great next step. Let's see what we can learn. Nobody is going to read your long business plan except you. A Lean Canvas is a one-page business plan template created by Ash Maria to essentially replace elaborate business plans with a single page. Zach Nyes from Techstars teaches us how to create our own Lean Canvas. This template has nine boxes to fill, ranging from your customer's problems to the unfair advantages that you have. And the order that you fill it in is really important. So check out the original resource for a step-by-step -step explanation. And to find this template, just Google Lean Canvas by Ash Maria. Build what your customers want. To do that, Zach Nice teaches us how to understand our customer. Einstein once said that the formulation of a problem is usually more essential than its solution. Here are some quick tips on how to figure out what is the problem. Interview people, but do this individually, not in groups, to avoid bias. Your idea is a hunch, so do your best to find as much evidence for that hunch as you can. While conducting your interview, it shouldn't seem like you're selling, because then the person will get defensive and you won't get the answers that you need. Conducting a good interview will help you understand what your customer wants or doesn't want. For a guide on how to interview people, Google Empathy Interview Planner and it should be the first result that you see. Categories exist all around us and to use them as a tool for our startup, we need to understand category design. Techstars Category Design Advisor Kevin Maney tells us how to do that. You need to become the category king. Nowadays, anyone can start a company, so the space gets oversaturated really quick. And when it comes to categories, it's winner takes all, or the majority. So if you find that there's something missing in a space and you create a new category, your company might just become the category king. We can use the fact that people naturally categorize things, so you need to make sure that your customer thinks of your company as a leader in your category. But remember, this takes years of constant and focused effort. And finally, think better, not just different, especially if you're entering an already established market. Creating new markets seems intimidating. Mike Damhaus from Techstars tells us how to do this with category design. What is it? Category design is a company strategy that helps you create a new space in a market. Your category name should be simple and easy to understand, otherwise people won't use it. Develop lightning strikes. This is a method to shift people's thinking from whatever they're using to your product. And finally, you want to tell the story of your product as if you were telling it at a bar with emotions. Your pitch is critical, and if nobody is reacting to it, it means that you haven't figured it out. Dave Mandel, who's a mentor at Techstars, has some advice on how to communicate your business well. The first and most important thing is that nobody cares what you do, only how you'll make their lives better. Essentially, people buy because of emotion. So first, relate to that and connect with their pain. If you manage to do this successfully, you can then proceed to share more about your company. Here are five things that you absolutely need to know about your company. Who is your target audience? What are your customers' pain points that you're addressing? What is your value proposition? Who are your competitors? And why you are different from the rest? It takes 28 times for people to remember something. So repetition is key. To get your brand remembered, you need to keep repeating the name and the key message. You'll want to use powerful imagery to capture your target audience's attention. Thought leader Chuck Pettis has some awesome advice on branding. Branding is one of the most powerful tools that you can use. Figure out what your top features are. The less, the better. Then, understand how the customer feels when you deliver on those features. And finally, research and find imagery to evoke the same emotions in your customers. Do you just not have enough time to do the things that you want to and need to do? David Brown from Techstars has some advice on how to get more done. Divide your tasks into today, upcoming, and later, so you know what to focus on first. 
in your mind you need to have clear what needs to be handled now versus what is not so urgent. This will ensure you're not getting anxious over every little problem. Have an end of the day ritual. This way, after a certain point, you can relax and be worry free instead of thinking about work all the time. And finally, get an assistant sooner rather than later. This will give you time to focus on things that are more important. KPIs or key performance indicators are critical in driving your business forward. So your KPIs should be driving your behavior. Tech star Zach Nice has some good insight on KPIs. Do a weekly check-in with the team. Here, you should share good news. Use this time to focus on your KPIs to see if you chose the correct ones. Find two or three KPIs that matter right now. Don't make the mistake of choosing too many. And sometimes you might just not have the data to show you the way. And what you have to do in this situation is just trust your gut. Are you stuck? Tech star Zach Nice teaches us how to set goals properly so that you make progress. And remember, motion is not equal to progress. There are two components to goals, mission and outcome. The mission is basically what progress do we want to make. And the outcome is how will we know we are making progress. To figure out the mission, describe what you want to achieve, not what you want to do. And make sure that the outcome that you want is specific and measurable so that you know that you've hit it once you have. And finally, make sure that your goals are outcome focused, not task completion focused. Human nature makes you want to start something new all the time. Instead, do the thing that is closest to being done. Tech star Zach Nice has some tips on how to not get caught up in the loop of starting new things all the time. Use a thing called the Kanban board to get your tasks finished and prevent anxiety. Also, don't start or take on too many things at once. Two or three things seem manageable, but even that is not the most efficient way to do it. So the best course of action is to start working on one thing and finish it. Entrepreneurs suck at pitching. So here's how to master your pitch by Nicole Glaros, CPO at Techstars. It's very important that you know your audience so you can properly entertain and impress them. The pitch can be broken up into four parts. The intro, the demo, the business stuff, and the landing. For the intro, try and grab their attention within the first 30 seconds. Tell a story, something unexpected, that's up to you. For the demo, show the actual product in use. Don't just talk about it. Keep this from two to three minutes. For the business part, keep this section to one minute. Here, you will tell the investor how you will make them money. And the landing or the outro should be short, about 30 seconds. Be confident. Leave with a call to action. It can be anything. And finally, remember that delivery is everything. 65% of startups fail because of people issues. Techstars Nicole Gleros teaches us how to navigate co-founder relationships before it gets too late. So here are the steps to do that. 1. Get your documents in order. 2. Really understand your co-founder. What are their goals, their strengths, their weaknesses, everything about them. 3. Have your roles clearly assigned. Who's the CEO? Who makes the decisions? 4. Talk about the elephant in the room. Don't wait to have difficult discussions later. Have them now. And finally, in this relationship with your co-founder, trust is paramount and nothing will work without it. If you're a part of Techstars, you get the benefit of having a mentor. Or you might have one outside of Techstars as well. Nicole Glaros from Techstars has a few tips on how to engage with our mentors. Watch your mentor's body language so that you can pivot the conversation accordingly. If the conversation is going slightly off track, redirect your mentor to get it back on track. Don't pitch to your mentors. Remember, they're there to guide you and help you solve problems that you're facing. So have problem-specific questions ready. And finally, a mentor should challenge you, not just pat you on the back. This way, you know you have a good mentor. Here are some mistakes that if made could blow up your company. And Jason Mendelson from Techstars helps us go through them. So here's what will blow you up. 
Picking a bad idea or being here for the wrong reasons. Not knowing your business model. Not knowing your goals. Not understanding your competition. Picking bad employees. Not firing people fast enough. And being overly emotional. Are you making any of these mistakes? In French, mise en place means having all your ingredients ready before you start cooking. Which is basically what you need to do when building an investor pipeline. Here are a few pointers from Cody Sims, Techstars. First, have all your materials ready before you start fundraising. Determine who to target, as in really spend some time on this and figure out why specifically this investor. Connect with people, as in your mentors, allies and investors, one on one and let them know that you're fundraising. And finally, track all communications that you have with investors. EQ is the ability to recognize, understand, and manage your emotions. Anna Barber teaches us how to increase it. First, you need to become more self-aware. For this, you need to know your strengths, areas in which you can improve, what are your core values, and finally, what are things that trigger you. Next, you need to be present and this will help you function at a much higher level. There are multiple ways to do this, so find one that suits you the best. Next, learn to deal with your fear, which is completely normal. Do this by talking about it, writing it down, doing something physical, or taking a break. Finally, we have flexible thinking. Essentially, just get good at being wrong and be open to feedback. Diverse companies have 19% higher retention rate, plus they perform better. Having a diverse workforce is really beneficial. So here's how to build one by Jason Thompson. Basically, your company should look like the world around you. So look around. The first step that you need to take is make a commitment towards diversity and then put someone in charge. For your hiring process, try and have a level playing field. For example, have two men and two women interviewing instead of three men and one woman. This will help you overcome your unconscious bias. What is the W3? Amos Schwarzfar breaks it down for us. It's a framework to figure out the three main questions that are going to help you get a repeatable sales process. 1. Who are you selling to? For this, you need to go really specific and identify the ideal customer. What are they buying? Essentially, it doesn't matter what you make, only what value you bring to your customer. So focus on that. And finally, why are they buying it? Figure out why does the buyer care? Mental health isn't discussed as much as it should be in entrepreneurship. Here are three examples of real life entrepreneurs who went through mental health issues and dealt with them. Here's how. The first one is Brad, and he had depression, or as he described it, absence of joy. He had a friend, Dave, who would sometimes just invite him out on walks, seeing that he was distressed. The takeaway for Brad was that doing simple things helps. Next, we had Andrea, who was feeling burnout. What she realized was that spending time with things that really matter to you helped overcome that. And finally, we have Matt, who was faced with anxiety and OCD. He got medical help. But what he also said really helped him was meditating and just sitting down and watching his thoughts passively. Even if you're not an entrepreneur, you might face similar issues. So it's always good to get help and put mental health really high up in your priority list. Follow Novel for more content like this.